to our ring announcer, Carlos Silva. Fight fans, here we go for the second bout of the evening. Ten rounds, heavyweights. Fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing green and white colored trunks. From Starkville, Mississippi. Weighing in at a trim 216 pounds. With a record of 27 wins, one defeat, and 18 big knockouts, help me welcome Keith McKnight. And his opponent, to my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white color trunks with black trim, from Independence, Missouri, Weighing in at 250 pounds, with a record of 13 wins, only 60 defeats, and 10 big knockouts, help me welcome Tui Tuiya. <laughs> 10 rounds, heavyweights. When the bell rings, the man in charge, Robert Gonzalez. Most fighters are professional fighters. They make themselves as such. They bring the hands at all times. They take yourself at all times. Those gloves. They look at both of you and they win. And here's our matchup. McKnight, as you can see, big height advantage. Sua, big weight advantage. McKnight's got the reach. Sua, 37 years of age. So, let me say this. Don't leave your seats early. McKnight's got... 12 first round knockouts to his credit. Tui Tui has got six first round KOs. Bob, both fast starters. Well, I think McKnight's competition has led to those early stoppages. He's a very smooth boxer, as you'll see. He moves around nicely. He's just made the transition from cruiserweight to heavyweight. You should have seen him at 195 with, 90 pounds with that six foot five inch frame. He doesn't want to lay in there with Tui Tui. He can't match power with him early. You know, he's got to box him from the outside, and if he's got to get worn for holding early in the fight, so be it. Box this guy, keep him on the end of that jab. That's what he wants to do. Box, use the whole ring, and let Tua, look at those legs on Tui Tua. Let him, let him get tired a little bit, walking around, carrying around all that weight. Tua, on the other hand, wants to work the body, work this kid over, trying to slow him down, trying to, trying to rough him up. You know, he's, he's, he's his first... A uh, big fight in a big town outside of his own, you know, home state. And, you know, that's what he's got to do. He's got to rough him up, try to hit him with one of those arcing bombs that he's got to be known for, Tui Tua. Well, Tua finally got off that four-bout losing streak. Uh, three of them were to the household names. Tommy Morrison, Bruce Selden, and Jorge Gonzalez all knocked him out. Finally got back on the winning track uh, last year in June and then hasn't fought for over a year. Sort of been on the shelf. No, that, I believe that was June of this year. June of, uh, uh, what does that say? This is June 95. But, uh, you know, he's he's up there in the Midwest at this stage of his career. You know, he's trying to get money fights. That fight with Leota was kind of a cross-town rivalry for the Samoan Championship of Missouri. Uh, and he's, uh, you know, you see him getting low there. He, he's got some experience, and you know, he, he, wants to, he really wants to try to get McKnight, get him early. Because the longer the fight goes, the slick box and keep McKnight, the better it is for him. And Tua is a, a Samoan ancestry. I believe so. Much like uh, other heavyweights, David Tua and Samson Pahua. Samson Pahua, David Tua, yeah, there's... Uh, Very similar bodies. If he's not, Arnie, he's doing a heck of an impersonation. McKnight boxing real smooth, using the whole ring, turning this guy, and just moving around. He doesn't want to lay in and... Uh, you know, try to match this guy with power, regardless of knockout ratios or whatever. You can just look at the two of these guys and know which one of them is the puncher. A little more than 30 seconds to go in round number one. We're scheduled for 10. In case you can't tell, these are heavyweights. McKnight came in 27 and 1, 18 big knockouts. Tui Tua 13 and 6, 10 KOs. Tua has, you know, unsettled careers before. He beat Big Dave Dixon, who was an undefeated prospect from Los Angeles. And we recently saw fight Tony Tucker on Showtime. He beat him when he was undefeated out in Nevada. Nice combination by... Oh, nice uppercut by McKnight. And we said, don't leave your seats. He's, both of them big on first-round knockouts. Tua doesn't seem to be moving, Bob. He didn't make it. 
That's all oh, she wrote. Cut. McKnight. Big first round knockout and a big test over Tui Tua. His 19th KO, his 13th first round knockout. There's Tua. Very happy and rightfully so, Keith McKnight. We said these guys start fast, and McKnight, big uppercut. Tua could not beat the count. And you've got to start to wonder about Tua's chin at this point. We're going to take a look at a replay here. Round number one action. Look at Odez, that big uppercut. Stops Tua in his tracks. He just goes flat down. Didn't come close to beating the count. There it is from another angle. Beautiful punch by Keith McKnight. Really starting to establish himself in the heavyweight division. Improves to 28 and 1. 19 knockouts. We didn't get a chance to tell you that his only loss was to left-hander Lyle McDowell. That was back in August of 94. He got stopped in the seventh round. We're going to go up now to our official announcement from our ring announcer, Carlos Silva. Right there. Keith McKnight, big KO victory, and again improves to 28 and 1, 19 knockouts, 13 of them now in the first round. And where Bob was saying, some of them were Tennessee wins, but uh, taking out Tui Tua in the first puts him a couple of rounds ahead of people like Tommy Morrison, Bruce Seldon, and Jorge Gonzalez, who respectively did it in the second and third rounds. He also was stopped by Phil Scott back in 1989. That was also in three. But he's, you know, he's got wins to his credit, though, against established heavyweights like Dave Dixon. I've got to say, though, at this point, that's McKnight's biggest win to date by, by no stretch of the imagination. Prior to that, of course, he was fighting cruiserweight. Only legitimately came over 200 pounds back in... June of 94, and now really starting to establish himself, and Tua certainly puts him into the picture. And I can't say that he's hardly broken a sweat because he does seem, and part, part of that's probably a big reason. He came in very warm. Tua looked very dry. Certainly the more warmed up of the two fighters, Keith McKnight. And all of 25 years of age, so big heavyweight career in front of him. And uh, now in the Cedric Kushner stable of heavyweights, uh, odds are we'll be seeing him over on heavyweight explosion shortly, I'm sure. But tonight, making a mark for himself on rising stars. And I know Bob Spagnuolo's up in the ring right now trying to get a hold of Keith McKnight, get his impression, which I'm sure is a positive one. Maybe want a little bit more TV time tonight, but again, 13th first round knockout for Keith McKnight. And we're going to go up to our Bob Spagnuolo now with Keith. Supposedly going to get tested here tonight. What do you think about that? Uh, felt good. You know, I trained hard. Seeing he was a big guy, big legs. I knew he wouldn't be able to catch me if I used my movement. I trained hard. My trainer carried far. Got me in shape. And everything came together. I think I passed the test. No, you really did. You know, it, we were saying that in the, uh, the early part of the fight was the only part we got to cover. You wanted to box around, you know, let this guy carry around all that weight. Let him tire himself out. You didn't want to try to match power with him early on, but it was a beautiful uppercut you caught him up. Thank you. Well, I knew that, you know, like you said, he's a big guy and he wouldn't be able to withstand 10 rounds. And, you know, my thing is movement and speed and a lot of hand speed. And uh, I was going to do that, but, you know, the punch landed. He went down and we got the victory. And, you know, praise God for that. No, no, it was a wonderful, you know, everybody's talking about he's from Tennessee. Nobody's ever seen him before. And you really, this is your crashing debut into the heavyweight division. What do you guys see out there that you'd like to fight? Uh, you know, that's not for me to decide. I'm the fighter. I fight whoever he puts in front of me. You know, that's the question you have to We managers love to hear that, yeah, Kerry. exactly, exactly. You know, but, uh, you know, we'll just get back in the gym and train hard, and we'll fight whoever they put in front of us. Now, excellent performance. What do you think? 
was very proud of his performance tonight. Uh, he'd been working on, on the uppercut in the gym. He'd been getting some tremendous work from a former world-class fighter, Frankie Swindell, and he'd been practicing that with Frankie, and Frankie gave us three wonderful weeks of work, and Keith was ready, and we're just real proud of his performance tonight. Really, for all the t opponent changes that you had and lead up to this fight, Frankie Swindell was a real good guy to work with to get ready for this Tui Tour. Absolutely perfect. It, 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 this was exactly what we trained for. You're absolutely right, Bob. Yeah, yeah but you, you turned him, he turned him around, he, he got him set, and he landed that nice uppercut. It was a beautiful, beautiful shot, and it really turned out the lights on a usually very durable fighter. Exactly, exactly. That's what we figured, that, you know, he, he takes a good punch, and, he, and he's, he's tough. So we landed the punch, we got him out. Thanks a lot, you know. Yeah. All right, well, congratulations, and uh, welcome to Rising Stars. You right, have a smashing debut. Back to you, Arnie. Thank you, Bob. Thanks, Bob. And that's Keith McKnight looking very happy with that. And again, it was the right uppercut. He said he was in the gym with Frankie Swindell. Some of you probably remember Frankie. Light heavyweight cruiserweight and eventually heavyweight prospect. Good veteran. Gave him some good work.